As Rust is becoming more and more popular, I thought I'd have a look at five Rust applications in FreeBSD that will either complement or perhaps replace existing applications. So traditionally, we would type find and we would search in the directory that we want to have a look in. In this case, I'm looking for something described as RoboNuggy, which I created earlier. And it finds it after a very slight delay. If you're looking for the second one, again, and third. There's always a slightly delay, about a second perhaps. But using FD and RoboNuggy within the same directory, which we're in anyway, instantly finds it. And as you can see, it finds all of them just as well. But also, so whilst it's quick at finding individual files, as in RoboNuggy 1, 2, and 3, but interestingly, if I put FD RoboNuggy, it will show all the files in the directory you're looking in that are enabled RoboNuggy, which is uh, really quite easy. And the syntax, again, is really simple. Because find can be a little bit difficult um, and seem a little bit arcane, really, to those who are not used to using it. Find will show you the full path where it's finding your files, but you can achieve the same result in FD if you do FD A and then the file that you want. In this case, it's showing you it's a user home, Christopher. The next one is TLDR, or TLDR, as it really should be. Whereas the man pages are a really useful feature of FreeBSD, if you particularly want to find out something, how it works, etc., and all the various nuances of the configuration. In fact, the man page really should be your first port of call if you've got a problem or you don't know how anything works. But it presents a lot of information, and some of it which you really don't need or you're not that interested in that particular point. You just want to get to the top facts, to the meat, really, as it were. Well, this is where the TLDR comes in. If I put TLDR man, which is what we were looking at earlier, it will filter out and present you with just the bare facts, just the bare usage facts. And that can be really useful if you uh, just want to get straight there. Say, for instance, if you put man gimp, it will uh, present a lot of information, description, a lot of command line options, etc. Very useful. If you just want to get straight there, TLDR gimp, and there you go. Shows you how to launch it, and launch it with uh, basic command switches. So it will save you some time in uh, wading through uh, quite extensive man pages. Next, we have Ion Shell. Um, if you're happy with the current shell that you use, then that's fine, there's, there's no problem. But Ion Shell is written in Rust, and it, I think it seeks to uh, fill the gap that might be missing, or you may feel that's missing in some of the current shells. It says, Ion Shell is a command line shell created to be a faster and easier to use alternative to the currently available shells. It is not POSIX compliant. Which that might in itself might be an issue for you, but if that doesn't bother you, then uh, you give it a go. Now, to me, a shell's a shell. I prefer the uh, Born shell, which is the standard user shell in FreeBSD and will be the standard complete shell or through the system in FreeBSD 14. But it has some interesting features, like some built-in command. If I put DIRS, it will return the full present working directory. It's got disown, which is capable of uh, removing all jobs from the background process list. So that might be something that you want. And there are quite a few other ones. Uh, I'm just going to bring up the entire list here, actually. As you can see, there are a lot of inbuilt commands in Ion Shell, which may be of interest here. I really don't do anything in the shell other than run uh, pre-existing applications or cobble together very, uh, very ugly looking batch files, etc. But if you're into programming with the shell, there may be something there which uh, status is not a login shell. It may uh, interest you, so uh, give it a look. And for those that are wondering, the uh, the hashtag there is not indication that uh, I'm in root. It's just what the iron shell puts at the end. So if I go into root now, you can see it just tells you it's at root at uh, satin. So no need to worry. You're not running in root unless you specifically say so. Next is Ruscan, which is uh, an alternative or really complementary to uh, Nmap. 
and it's described really as the modern port scanner. And you can either have it uh, go through or pipe to Nmap or any other scripts that you uh, want to point it to. And some of the features is full scripting engine support, it's adaptive learning, and like I say, automatically pipes into Nmap. Now, it's not something I use on a, uh, very rarely actually. But again, if you are into using your port scanners, etc., this could be really interesting for you. And I'll just give it a test on a machine I set up um, as a, well, a scan target, really. I haven't locked it down, so if there's anything exposed, it'll probably show it. So if I just put Ruscan and uh, hyphen A, which really just tells you the address, and it will do its little thing and scan through all the ports. And it tells you what's available on this particular machine that I'm testing on. And just to round off this small selection, I mean, it is only a small selection. There's there's tons more available, but to keep the video short, I'm only going to list five. And the next one that we're looking at is a text editor called Kibi. Now that, uh, really should be, or it's Kai by probably Kibi. That should be given the best name because it's it's a cute name. And then when you first test it up, you see at the bottom there's some shortcuts like Control S to save, Control Q to quit, etc., and to find and go to and duplicate. It's a neat little editor, really. And and one of the benefits is it's touted as being a text editor in less than one thousand and twenty-four lines of code, written in Rust, of course. And it's a configurable text editor with UTF-8 support, incremental search, syntax highlighting, line numbering and more. I'm just going to copy and paste some text, just put it on there, do some highlight features of uh, Kibi. So yeah, it's it's uh, a neat little text editor, really. If you just want to jot some notes down or put some code together, there it is. And it's, interestingly, it's licensed under either the uh, Apache license version 2, or MIT license, it says, at your option. So I should imagine whichever one you want it to put it as. So it's interesting in itself. And here's the shortcuts, if you want, like I said with it before. It lists it at the bottom, just in case you forget. And, yeah, it's good. It's a little bit too basic for me. I do prefer Easy Editor, EE, but uh, if you want a more slimline choice, then this is a good one. Anyway, this is only a short list. Um, thanks for watching, and I'll catch you next time. This and every other video on my channel has been made using FreeBSD and open source software.